everyone. Welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today. We are here once again on a Saturday with a doctor in the house who is going to talk to you about dental care for senior citizens. We have here with us Dr. Chintamani Pant, who is a leading dental surgeon practicing in Mumbai. A graduate from the D.Y. Patel Dental and Medical College in Navi, Mumbai. He has a master's degree in, from Sydney in Australia. Dr. Pant has done oral implantology and advanced surgical courses from India, Portugal, Korea, Germany, etc. He has trained and studied lasers in dentistry from BioLase in Australia and one of the very few dentists using a hard and soft tissue laser machine in regular practice. Welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tell me what you studied dentistry in Portugal. Yes, so we did have these advanced courses in uh, oral implantology and they were conducted in uh, Portugal. So I visited Portugal to study under them, study from the masters in Portugal itself and uh, learned a lot from the European protocols of working with uh, implants and doing surgical work. You know, there are so many questions that have come in for you. Let me start off by requesting you to say a few opening remarks for about dental care for senior citizens. Right. So uh, first, let me thank uh, Mr. Vikram Sethi, Mr. Maheshwari, and the entire team of seniors today. Uh, thanks for having me over to interact and uh, try to clear out a few things about the dental health and the oral health that is a big challenge for us right from our childhood right to the senior age. It's something that is a quiz to everyone. Uh, it's a funny thing and uh, thanks for the warm welcome. I'm actually welcomed usually by saying that I'm petrified of you and you're the last person I want to see. So, uh, it, pleasure entirely. Uh, pleasure is all mine too. Thank you. Uh, so here I am a second generation dental surgeon in the family. Uh, my father has been practicing for the last 45 odd years. Uh, still active in practice and uh, thanks to him I've got a lot of uh, experience with moving aging patients. Uh, I don't want to be rude by calling all of them generalized as seniors and uh, uh, still want to make them feel young. So I would like to be uh, happy to explain questions which people still have doubts even after all the uh, years that they've been put in and uh, all the experience that they must have gathered through their own dental experiences. Great. Uh, so I'm going to start off with, with a question. Uh, given the new abnormal that we are in, sure. uh, uh, given the, the pandemic uh, that exists and sees, uh, uh, you know, we don't see any signs of it uh, 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 going anywhere. Going anywhere. That's uh, right. well, the question which at least six people have sent us is, is it all okay to uh, uh, visit a dentist given the fact that you can't be up close with a with anyone around, you know, going to a, 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 a for a dental treatment is like going, going to a salon and uh, you have the dentist really uh, uh, close to you. So is it safe? Yes, um, actually, it's um, now surprisingly uh, proven that a dental clinic is one of the safest places that you could be in in today's time, apart from your house, because the amount of um, efforts that are put in by me and my Department colleagues in uh, running the dental clinics is extraordinary. We have to uh, sanitize a lot more. Uh, the only problem is for a patient to travel from point A to point B. Uh, point A is safe for him, point B is safe for him. Uh, having said that, the clinics in general are very well sanitized, very well taken care of. Uh, the doctors, the staff, and everyone are very well covered. Uh, self-sanitized and made sure that everything in and around is fine. Coming to the clinic, uh, it's not going to be like a regular practice as it used to be before. Uh, there are going to be time slots uh, and appointments given to everyone where no one else will be able to be entertained as much as they would have wanted to, just because they cannot crowd the place too much. Uh, in these times with a lot of dental work that happens, there's a lot of bacteria that flies out from the patient's mouth while we are working and the entire sanitation process comes down to getting rid of as much of bacteria that we've uh, gathered or aroused while work has been done. 
So uh, rest assured, I'm sure each and every dental practice in India and around the world is well taken care of. All the precautions are in place. So in those two months when the lockdown was uh, was was complete, yes. uh, you know, if, if somebody had had some problems uh, in uh, 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 with their teeth, and you know, we right. have a, a lockdown coming up next week uh, in Pune, and we have a lot of Pune, our leaders yeah. uh, in, in that city also. Right. So, what does the person do when there's a lockdown? And uh, uh, you know, then and, and so, some pain in the tooth. Right. Um, so now this can be divided into two parts, right? If it is just an onset of uh, any kind of an infection or any kind of pain, uh, it can be controlled with medication. Of course, if there is a swelling and uh, you know it's just too much of unbearable pain, I would not like to put the patient through a lot of uh, antibiotics or medication. To a limit, yes, we have to control it before we could do anything. Uh, in cases where areas like Pune or uh, really heavily contaminated areas where things are just not getting any better, uh, medication is your best option that you could relieve yourself from. Uh, there are a few home remedies that you could do uh, to take care till the lockdown period uh, passes by. And uh, as and when you get the opportunity to go and get at least some relief done from your regular dentist. Because in, in the case of uh, uh, dental treatment, there's nothing like telemedicine, right? You, you can't no, do we, Yeah, so the problem is that we ha both have to physically be present over there without us putting our hands in the mouth, nothing's happening. And you can't also do a home, uh, home visit? Or, or is, that, is that a concept that is, that, that, that uh, is coming Home up? visits, home visits are very, very, very limited uh, work that we can do. It's uh, probably not even as useful as it would be for the patient to visit uh, the clinic because uh, a lot of our work depends upon the technology and the machinery that we use. Uh, having said that, again, in a lockdown period, societies don't allow the doctors or anybody else to come in. Uh, medical emergencies are a different scenario where uh, it could be administered in the house, on the bed, you know, anyhow that could be done. Whereas dental, not really. Dental has to be uh, administered, worked upon in the dental unit. Okay, we have a question, um, uh, and in fact, quite a few anonymous uh, readers who say, uh, one of them asks, how do you maintain gum hygiene as you age? So, gums is uh, something that go along right from the first breath till the last breath, right? Uh, gums is something like a cushion in the mouth which is basically holding our tooth and the bone all together. Gum health keeps deteriorating as we age uh, due to a number of reasons. Uh, oral hygiene being the biggest one. Second is if uh, the wear and tear of our jaws, of our teeth, uh, habits like grinding our teeth, uh, uh, having stress. Uh, stress leads to a lot of clenching and grinding on the pressure onto the gums. Uh, eating too much of hard food. Uh, all these things um, are factors that start affecting the gum problems. Maintaining it and managing it is gum massaging every day. Rinse your mouth thoroughly. Uh, when I say gum massage it, uh, after you finish brushing, we usually do not touch our gums. We uh, are usually brushing only the tooth surface. Where I would suggest that, or I do suggest all my patients to hold the finger, the forefinger and rub their gums right till they feel the corner of the back tooth. Uh, this basically helps in pushing out all the soft plaque and tartar. That is basically a biofilm created with the saliva in the mouth and that sticks around the tooth surfaces, which creeps into the blood. Uh, that is where the gums are situated. The gums uh, can, it's a very simple process of massaging, uh, rinse really well. Uh, whenever we finish brushing, uh, make sure that the tongue is clean because uh, that creates a lot of bacteria in the mouth, which definitely sticks onto the gums and then starts eroding the gums too. Uh, and keep visiting your dentist once in at least six to eight months to just have a check, make sure that the gums are fine and uh, keep things in order. Brushing with what kind of toothpaste without really naming any... If, if there's any uh, sensitivity or suddenly there's a, a bout of sensation that's happening everywhere, Colgate sensitive, uh, an anti-sensitive paste for that matter, a sensodyne for that matter. They work really well uh, just to subdue everything. 
uh, sensor and repair and protect is one of the pastes that I know that creates um, a covering layer as a repair layer uh, around the tooth. So over a period of time, they help in controlling sensitivity like problems. Uh, there are a, a number of products in the market like by Colgate, pain off, where you can apply a dab of the medicine which will suit the pain for the time being. Old uh, customary grandma's recipes of clove oil helps as home remedy. Uh, so these are just a few things that could help being at home. And what about the uh, you know various Ayurvedic uh, toothpaste that have come in? Is that is that something that you recommend? Is that is it, is it as good? Are they as good as uh, the, the the old uh, you know the sensitive and yes. Uh, so see sensitive. Uh, pastes are usually meant only for sensitivity issues, whereas the Ayurvedic pastes have a number of uh, different uh, mixed together. Now, they all work in their different and respective areas of the oral health. Uh, it could even be sensitivity, it could even help in gum bleeding uh, cases, inflammation in gums. So, uh, it's in general that you would use one of these Ayurvedic pastes. While a sensitive teeth will definitely need something like a Sensodyne or a Colgate sensitive or any other sensitive paste in the market. Um, yeah. uh, this is a question which perhaps is not just for senior citizens, for everybody. How often should, get, should, how often should one get their teeth cleaned and polished? I would say pay a visit to the doctor maybe once in six or eight months, as I had mentioned even earlier, because every day there's definitely something that's going on in our mouth. Six to eight months, a visit at least makes us in check, keeps us in check rather than uh, have trouble coming through. Uh, gum diseases and gum problems are something that they just creep by. We don't really realize them till you have bleeding gums or you have pain in the gums. So having them checked, the dentist can definitely see on how the body reacts. Sometimes uh, they the tartar develops a lot too soon. Sometimes in some cases, they just don't develop for an entire year together. So having it checked is uh, once in six to eight months. Uh, definitely the doctor will suggest on what is needed and what is not needed. The, the cleaning process is, is you know, going to harm the teeth significantly if you, if you clean it very often. It doesn't harm the teeth. Um, see, more so uh, the tartar that builds up that is meant for the cleaning is basically on the tooth surface going towards the gums. So it's basically like if you hold a pole in front of you and the base of it starts weakening because of the tartar, even though the pole is healthy, it's going to start shaking because the base of the gum, the gum which basically holds it is getting eaten up by the, by the tartar. It's a myth that the teeth become even more loose and they have problems once someone goes for cleaning and comes back. It's actually a good thing that you get rid of all that gunk from the mouth because that leads to a lot of health issues, not only oral health, because that mixes with your saliva. When you swallow the saliva, it's going into your system and that creates more trouble in the system that the bad bacteria from the tartar has been ingested. Uh, teeth cleaning is definitely not a harmful thing. It should be done uh, in proper intervals, uh, if not having any gum issue at least between six to eight months, have yourself checked for any kind of gum problems. And this, this, and this is for people, people of all age. Okay. From all ages. We have a question from Rajpal Singh who uh, asks, uh, can the restoration of enamel be done if deteriorated? No, no, sorry. You cannot uh, restore enamel. And so what would you recommend to a so uh, you can't restore enamel. So what you do is you, you either start using one of these pastes, uh, like sensitive paste, like I mentioned, uh, repair and protect or anything else in the market. It basically uh, uh, leaves a layer. It creates a protective layer over the broken down enamel, but it does not uh, replicate or duplicate or uh, substitute for what an enamel, enamel does. So my request to all my patients, right, from the childhood to whoever is senior is that the main problem we have is we brush our teeth too hard. So whoever is brushing hard, 90% of them in towards the years ahead, they start wearing off the enamel. Uh, to protect yourself from deteriorating from any further, start using a soft or an ultra soft brush. Brush as gently as you can. 
and uh, try to have something where acidity in the body does not uh, act too much. Uh, we have a question which says, what's the common reason for frequent dry mouth? My dad is diabetic and has a heart condition. Uh, diabetes is one factor where you could have uh, a dry mouth syndrome. Uh, being a heart patient, the, the medication that he must be taking also plays a role upon saliva generated in the mouth. Now, uh, having spoken about saliva, uh, they're basically, they, uh, they ooze out of the salivary glands, right? So over a period of time, if the salivary glands for any reason start getting blocked, uh, there could be uh, dry mouth syndrome. Dry mouth can be cured by a couple of gels that are available in the market. Uh, you could take a little on the finger, apply it towards the inside of the cheek. That's where the salivary glands are uh, heaviest. You could just lubricate them a little. They may open up and uh, patients start salivating. Not completely, but enough that they don't feel the uh, dry mouth syndrome. Also, you could uh, ask the patient to suck on a little bit of a lime or something citric that will uh, aggravate his salivation and that should open his salivary glands a little more. We have a question. We have two questions which are similar. One is that I have been having pan masala for many years uh, and uh, I'm worried about getting oral cancer. And there's another question which says, what are the symptoms of oral cancer? Uh, firstly, pan masala in general is not a very good thing to do. It's a very bad habit and uh, I'm sure the patient, the person who eats it also knows about it, but the habit being as bad as it is, is very difficult to get rid of. Um, I would definitely suggest that you start reducing uh, whatever amounts you're taking, start reducing it and keep a goal to get rid of it sooner the better. Uh, having asked upon uh, the cancer part of it, you have to be checked clinically. Uh, you could have uh, already have symptoms of what could be an onset of an oral cancerous lesion. Uh, I'm in no condition to say that you have to see it seriously, but since you do have a history of so many years of, e of uh, having the habit, please get yourself checked. Uh, Symptoms, symptoms like uh, white lesions in the mouth, uh, too many uh, ulcerations in the mouth, uh, a burning sensation in the cheeks, uh, burning sensation to even anything remotely uh, warmer than room temperature, uh, anything to spice, um, restriction in opening of the mouth, uh, lips being a little sore, um, the cheek retraction is not enough. These are all symptoms that you're heading towards unwanted things. And uh, you do definitely show spots on the tongue, uh, lesions around the, uh, inside the cheeks, around the border of the gums. Uh, that all needs to be checked clinically just to see if they are predisposing factors for an onset of a cancerous lesion. Uh, if there's anything of such sorts, the dentist or the doctor will definitely guide you the right way. Uh, thank you. And we have our next question says, uh, what are the risks involved in getting a dental implant? There are no risks involved in getting a dental implant. Uh, in fact, uh, a dental implant now has evolved over the years. It's just kept getting better and um, more modernized, more uh, acceptable and uh, more precise for that matter. So there is no risk in getting any kind of dental implant work done. Uh, the only contradictions to do implants uh, in the oral cavity is one with health problems such as diabetes. If the diabetes is uncontrolled or very fluctuating diabetic uh, uh, measures, I would contraindicate it in that condition. Uh, dental implants are basically uh, bone related. They are anchored into the bone and they're supposed to be healthy as long as the bone is healthy. In aging patients uh, who are already medically compromised, are on a number of pills and a number of drugs that can create some kind of um, a weakening in the bone. If that is the situation, there's a 50-50 chance that your implants may survive or not. I have worked and we've done patients who are late into their 70s, even early 80s, 
who have had medical issues but not uh, grave medical issues just a few heart patients and otherwise bone conditions have been good and uh, for the last i think four or five years that we worked upon them till now they've been totally fine so there is no risk as such in doing um, dental implants again one more point i'd like to suggest over here is something called a sinusitis that we have below our eyes which uh, we very commonly call a sinusitis when we get a cold so these are basically air sacs more so in the molar areas as age uh, progresses the bone height over there starts reducing that becomes a complication that becomes a point to ponder or think uh, while placing implants if whether we will be penetrating into the sinus or not otherwise there is no other problem that uh, faces with dental implants you know i must ask you about uh, water lays dentistry uh, yes. at this point so is that is that a, a possible uh, route that you can take for even implant uh, uh, or, or, and, and and where is it where is it really used used so uh, what water lays dentistry is basically laser dentistry that we use in uh, dental practice uh we've all been dreading and we've all undergone uh, the dental drill which happens to be my best friend but uh, the most hated tool for every patient that walks into my clinic so what uh, i uh, try to do is we try to use the dental laser which basically the one i use is a hard and soft tissue laser a hard tissue means anything to do with the bone cutting a cavity opening up a root canal doing a root canal uh that all comes under heart tissue uh there are instances where uh, sometimes the tooth is stuck in the bone and it's instead of cutting the uh, bone around with the laser very precisely we open just what is needed to be opened uh when we use a dental drill to cut cavities we are actually vibrating the tooth and uh, fracturing micro fracturing it even further creating a bigger space uh while as while using the laser we pinpoint exactly upon the cavity that is present in the mouth and make sure that we eradicate it just enough that the bone that the tooth is basically affected we don't have to dig into a big hole as we would conventionally do uh coming talking more upon the soft part of the laser soft tissue means your cheeks um again coming to cancerous cases where you have a retraction a limited retraction limited opening where the cheek bones uh, are stuck to the cheek walls they are called as uh, oral submucous fibrosis these are strings that uh, grow along the cheek border which restrict the opening so the soft tissue laser helps in opening up these strings these bands uh, working on inflamed gums bleeding gums uh, doing gum surgeries so we could probably do all of this by reducing half the healing time uh, you could heal within 24 to 48 hours when compared to a 7 or a 8 day protocol where gum surgeries are done with flaps and uh, given sutures and stitches which need 7 uh, to 10 days of healing time uh, so these are places where we use lasers in dentistry uh, trying to minimally invade into the oral cavity and uh, the advantage of it is that we don't really need to uh, anesthetize the patient every now and then that we would otherwise do conventionally a, a question which has just been asked is that are there any dangers with laser because for instance in the case of uh, laser eye surgery there are right. some dangers which are there are there any dangers that that uh, exist mm-hmm. with the uh, water laser uh, no uh, there are no dangers unless uh, of course see a dental laser to be used uh, for dentistry requires a different set of skills it's a different science it's a different phenomenon it's a different way to work uh, in the oral cavity with a dental laser having said that the dental laser which is manufactured is in complete control of the dentist uh, there are volt uh, there are powers that we work upon in specific areas however uh, you have to be that much closer to the tissue that we are working upon so for example if someone has a doubt that while working if the laser just fires somewhere else in the mouth is it going to penetrate anything is it going to burn down anything no it won't because it is specified to a specific wavelength to where it will fire and how much of uh, uh, power is initiated to that particular wavelength if anything away from it is not going to affect anything it's completely safe 
and uh, we take all the precautionary measures while using it. For example, covering our eyes, covering the patient's eyes and making sure that nothing is uh, going to reflect back into the patient. Good, thank you. We have a question from Sunil Deshmukh who asks how to cover, how to overcome bad odor by home remedies. Bad odor is something which happens for a number of factors. Main factor according to what I feel and I've observed is a, a systemic problem. A systemic problem comes right from the tummy. If your tummy is not uh, very healthy, if your digestion is not very good, if you suffer from any kind of any level of acidity, it's not churning and digesting the food right. It's sending out that bad bacteria back into the mouth, which mixes with your saliva. And that's basically washing all over the mouth. It's sitting between teeth. It's sitting on the uh, top of your tongue. It is every time you breathe, you're breathing that bad bacteria, which creates that bad odor. That's one factor. A second factor is uh, not maintaining your oral health. If you're not uh, rinsing your mouth enough, if you're not brushing enough after a meal, the bacteria remains in the mouth. Uh, salivary glands that we spoke about, they help in salivation. Salivation carries again good bacteria and bad bacteria. They again carry good bacteria and bad bacteria. Uh, because of which uh, they all linger around. Every meal, the mouth has to be washed really well. It has to be made sure that nothing stays around in the mouth. Once we wash our mouth after a meal, we are again inviting good bacteria, good salivation that should take care of the, uh, the mouth odor. To eradicate the mouth odor problem is uh, you can use a mouthwash uh, by uh, a chemical called as chlorhexidine, which basically uh, neutralizes the pH in the mouth, breaks down bad bacteria, increases good bacteria. You can do a little bit of salt water rinsing at home. Uh, home remedy, you can add some little bit of an alum. Uh, crystal or alum powder in the salt water mix and you can rinse your mouth with it. These are antiseptic as well as antibacterial uh, agents and they are natural agents. So no chemicals and you can happily use them twice a day if need be thrice a day. If the odor problem does not solve by these things, please visit your dentist. You definitely need some gum uh, tension. We have a lot of similar questions but I'm going to ask you uh, two again interconnected. One yeah. is uh, any alternative treatment available for braces? Is there an age for braces? Right. So uh, with the advancement of science and technology and uh, things moving from the conventional way to the digital world, uh, we've definitely come a far way by substituting regular conventional steel braces and wires in the mouth to something called as aligners. Uh, aligners are basically these transparent trays that uh, substitute the wires and the elastics that are put onto the surface of the tooth. Uh, they work in parts of phases where each aligner uh, helps in turning the tooth or turning the teeth in whatever direction we want. Uh, that is the best alternative available in the market today. Uh, for seniors, uh, your second question was uh, regarding seniors. Uh, use. Is there an age, age limit for people who want so, to? Not necessarily there's an age limit. But according to nature, according to science, uh, the, there is an age group where we start with uh, orthodontic treatment. Orthodontic treatment is the braces treatment and alignment of teeth for that matter, uh, aligning of jaws for that matter. Uh, so it's easier and faster done at a younger age. It does happen even at an older age, but it just happens a lot more slowly. Um, now talking about senior patients or senior clients that would want to get the teeth aligned. There are a number of factors. One is if there is enough of space available for any kind of tooth movement, uh, any kind of fixed prosthesis in the mouth, which may need to be corrected or removed for having creating space or making sure that the tooth could move. So if these are the situations, then it wouldn't be so much for seniors as much as it would be for younger people. If luckily no treatment has been done and if there are just minor corrections for like when we age, uh, spacing and spacing between teeth is one of the most common uh, problems that people face. These spaces can be closed with uh, using this alternative aligner treatment. But uh, closing gaps, moving teeth, moving jaws, that's a little difficult. 
we have a question from Sandy Berger who asks, how about doing oil pulling in the morning before brushing teeth? Is it okay to do so? Oil pulling has become very famous uh, since the Google world and uh, Facebook has uh, come into our lives. Uh, it's all over the place. Every second person who comes into the clinic has been asking me about oil pulling. Well, yes, uh, I'm going to go off the professional part over here and uh, go back to history. These are old traditional methods that were done before, uh, which have had a lot of impact and a lot of positive aspects to this kind of uh, work done in the mouth before. I wouldn't say that they cause any damage, but at the same time, I would make you a little precautious upon what oil you use and how you use uh, the oil pulling method. Try not to push a lot of uh, pressure onto the gums that you'll end up damaging or poking yourself with your fingers and your nails. Uh, a very light gentle massage is okay. You could just massage it in circular ways and that's also enough. Once in a day is more than enough. Any, any final thoughts for, uh, for our uh, uh, readers and viewers over here in terms of overall uh, uh, dental care specifically for senior citizens and specifically in a time when there is a lockdown. Yes. There could well be a lockdown any day, right? You could have a right declared from tomorrow. So, what is the overall uh, uh, guidance that you would like to give uh, to people to have decent uh, 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 dental state of uh, of being? Right. So, uh, I like to start with points into prevention of uh, any kind of dental problems that we would come into. One is uh, make sure your diet is right. Uh, make sure you rinse and really I keep emphasizing on it. Uh, rinse and make sure you brush your teeth really well. Twice a day is a mandatory habit to have. Uh, thirdly is if you have anything sweet or if you're having any kind of desserts, wait for 15-20 minutes and make sure you wash them off. Uh, after a cup of tea or coffee, since everyone is at home or if you, are, if you can, just make sure you rinse your mouth so the tea, coffee, sugary things do not stick around onto the tooth surface. Massage your gums every day. Uh, you will definitely see a lot of uh, gum improvement, health improvement where your teeth are concerned. You will get rid of a lot of things that usually you don't realize are sticking around in the mouth. Uh, try not to bite into anything too hard where there could be a call for emergency and nothing can be done about it till situations get better. Uh, being at home, people who wear dentures, make sure you don't drop them in the wash basins or around the house. Uh, just uh, keep them clean, keep them wet, keep them moist, don't let them dry out. And uh, be careful with what uh, ever you all are doing to maintain it. Do a little more being at home. We have a question to your response just now. And it says, Doctor, it's so easy for you to say that wash your uh, mouth, you know, any number of times that you eat. But in a in a typical office scenario, you can't really do that. Or if you are stepping out and having some street food, how do you wash your mouth? Of course, uh, currently street food, etc., may be a no-no. But uh, but yeah. uh, just an overall, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. your point of view on this. Yeah. So as easy as it is for me to mention it. Uh, I know it's, it's not an everyday thing, even if I'm working in my own practice all day long, even I don't get that chance. So as and when you get your chance and opportunity to rinse your mouth, don't take it for granted that things are just getting washed away. They could be affecting your oral health. If not at home, uh, if you're outside, as soon as you get back home, make sure you rinse your mouth before you put anything else in the mouth first and then again before you sleep at night. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chindan. It was a pleasure having you here. Given the number of questions that you've received, and uh, you've been very, uh, you know, patiently answering all of them. I uh, hope I've come across and uh, tried to uh, clear out a lot of doubts. Once again, thank you for being here. And sure. thank, you, Dr. thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor. Thank you.